So today we're going to be replacing the head gasket. This is a BMW 540i. Um, also going to re be rebuilding the Vios timing gears and changing out the valley pan cover. So there's a lot of work here that we're going to do, but some of it is maintenance, some of it needs to be done. The valley pan cover, if I'm going this far, I'm figuring I better just change it because it's never been done before. So first thing is you got to unplug everything. You see I've already took the liberty of unplugging things. Um, BMW does a good job of making their plugs so they'll only go in one place. So you don't have to worry too much about getting them mixed up. So all your plugs, your water, your water heater, there's a plug down here to your vacuum line. You pull your vacuum line off that goes to your intake manifold. Everything like that unplug. Then you got five bolts. Um, of course you have your cap pieces on here that hold your cover. You take that off and you take your five bolts out and the fuel rail come loose, okay? You have to take out your coil packs. So you've got two nuts on each coil pack, number 10 nuts. You take all those out on one side, take them all out on the other side. And your fuel line, as mine has, I've seen different ones, these nice little push pins. You push the pin in and wiggle it and it'll come off. Um, take your fuel line loose. And then if you look in the back where your wire goes through, you have these metal clips. Now I, I do on this one, but some of them are different. And if you make this a little bit loose, um, this piece will clear it. Then the whole thing will pretty much lift out of there and come up. Now you have to, of course, take the coil packs out of the holes before they're gonna, before it's gonna come up. And this whole thing will flip over. And I will show you. Now, after you do that, you want to take your fan off, which I already have the bl the uh, blade and clutch. Take your hoses off. Of course, these are just pull clips if you've never done it before. Take your alternator hose loose and all your hoses off. Um, and we're going to take the fan shroud out. Now, that's basically just to give you more room. So, when you take your fan shroud off, what you have to do is you have to pop this little thing off and get your thing out here. Now, you see mine's got a clamp on it. If it's still factory, it has a squeeze clamp on it. You just kind of get to get it, get it off and you can put a hose clamp back when you put it back together. There's also a hose down there and a plug down on your fan shroud. So we're going to take all that loose. We're going to flip our thing over and you will see next how we, what we do after that. Okay, as you can see, that thing flips right up out of the way, and we got a clear view to our intake manifold. Now, in the back, there's a couple hoses. There's one that goes here to your brake line, just yank that off. Then, it's got two of these, you'll see little yellow plastic clip, clips with hoses in them. You, you just slide the clip back, yank the hoses out, there's two of them back there. And then there is... Uh, once you take all your nuts off for your intake and these little spacers just come right out. I pull them out ahead of time rather than have them fall out and get lost. Then there is a tube back here right down. If you look right down in the front, left side, driver's side, there's a tube. And what you got to do is you take a little screwdriver and pry back on it. And it's got a spring in the back. You'll see, I'll show you once I get it off. But that pops out, and then the intake manifold is basically loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of there and I'll show you how that spring goes and we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, so this is the part that I was talking about. This just has a spring on one end and it just, you know, it'll, it'll spring on there. 
but this part clips in you'll see where it clips in now this little piece of rubber right here rubber hose is famous for cracking and breaking and it'll throw emission codes um, so it might be something worth if you're going this far just go ahead and stick a new piece of hose on it so anyway that's the intake man thing then we gotta take the valve covers off now of course this is a you should have already removed your battery power if you didn't do so because <laughs> you don't want to short everything out uh, you have your battery jump start thing here and there's three bolts in the front for your valve cover your bolts down here for your valve cover um, it's also time to think about what you want to do as far as you know it's time to put gaskets it's time to do this I mean you got a lot of this engine taken apart you can get to your rear uh, heater hoses if you'd like to replace them um, anything like that you know hey just you know for the if you're talking about small money you know just go ahead and do it anyway so we're gonna take this valve cover off and then what we're going to do is we're going to flip that back over this way and we're going to take the other valve cover off now we have to take both of them off for the timing and you'll see how that works out but at any rate we're going to do that next and then we'll move on so with the fuel rail flip back over we took off this valve side cover next thing we got to do with that fuel rail out of the way if you can see right here there's a chain tensioner and it's got one bolt that goes up underneath here we'll go ahead and take that out while we can still get to it um, then we're going to go ahead and remove all our hoses uh, I still got my hoses on here Now we do have to take the water pump off for this so you have a crossover tube here that's got one bolt down here on this side of the head and right here by your pollution thing there's another bolt right down there so you take those three bolts out and this um, crossover tube will come out now you just wiggle it out easy don't bend it or it'll be a pain in the ass to get back in um, next thing we got to do is completely remove our chain tensioner uh, chain tensioner, a belt tensioner um, there's three two screws for your adjustment one in the center so we have to take that out completely to get to our water pump bolts. So go ahead and remove that and take those other things loose and we'll move on to what's next. Okay, so I got my chain tensioner out, my crossover pollution tube is out, secondary air tube is out. Uh, I got my idler pulley off, this is where it went. Um, all my hoses are gone. Now there's one hose here that plugs in the bottom of your water pump. You need to remove that. So the next thing we're going to do is take the water pump off and the front covers. So I find it easier to go ahead and take the pulley off first. And then you have a bolt in the center, bolts around the outside. And if you wiggle it back and forth, it'll come off of these tubes. Um, now, it... Uh, if you're going this far, if you've never changed your water pump, it may be a good time to just go ahead and stick a new one on there. And all these things, like inside here, there's rubber O-rings um, that should be replaced when you're going this far. Uh, so you kind of need that stuff. But anyway, I mean, it's up to you, but, you know, get all the gaskets you need ahead of time. You won't be sitting here two or three days waiting for to come in because you can only get this kind of stuff at BMW or internet I mean regular auto parts store can get it but usually it's a long wait so then we're going to take our front covers off now there's just three bolts on each side and there's two here for these gaskets that go on your VIOS adjusters you just take a pick and pick at it right back here after you take the two screws out and that will slide off the front so once you do that you got your water pump off and then you can go ahead and take the cover off and we're just going to repeat and do the same thing on the other side the only difference is here you have a dipstick everything else is pretty much the same uh, you got your two screws and it should slide off we have to get the water pump out of the way first. 
So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to take the water pump off. And we're going to take the two front covers off. So next thing we want to do is we want to remove the oilers, these top bars here. Now if you look down, there's a slotted piece here. And there's one on the exhaust cam as well. Now, you want to tie your chain up, okay? And the reason is so it doesn't fall down inside. If it falls down inside, you got to tear the whole bottom end apart. So, take some tie wire or something and tie up your chain so it doesn't fall down inside. So, we're going to take the oilers off and then we're going to put a backup wrench on the camshaft but well, we're actually going to do the intake camshaft so we're going to put a backup wrench on back here and then we got a star bit up front and we will be turning this clockwise now this is a t55 bit goes in there but they're counterclockwise bolts so you're going to be turning it clockwise to loosen it you're going to loosen both of these so we take both oilers off and loosen both of the Vios gears. And like I say, tie your chain up. Don't take it completely off yet. Wait for that, but just loosen them. So we're gonna do that next. Okay, so now what we gotta do is get the exhaust manifold off. Now this side, there's not enough room. You can't get down in there. So what you gotta do is, if you look straight down here in the front, you'll see the motor mount. And there's a screw, one screw, I don't know if it's showing up down there, that you can see right in the top or nut actually. You take that nut loose and then you can jack up this side of the engine. Uh, sometimes it's better just to take both nuts loose and you can jack up the whole thing. But put a block of wood under there, find some place solid and jack up this side of the engine. Then when you jack up this side of the engine you'll be able to get to the exhaust bolts down here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and take my exhaust nuts actually loose and you'll be able to see what I mean. Okay, so the exhaust manifold's off, as you can see. That's probably the worst part of the whole job. I mean, it is tight. Using a combination, you see how short of an extension I got on there? It's a number 13, uh, and you just got to work at it. Now, it'll come off that way. When we go to put it back on, most of the time you can't get it back on. You have to take the exhaust loose um, back near the cats. So anyway, we'll worry about that when we put it back together. So we're going to go ahead and one more thing we have to take loose is your crossover pipe here. And there's just three number 10 bolts in the back that are also very difficult to get to. What I do is pop these heater hoses off and they make your life a lot easier. Um, but usually I use a quarter inch socket to get back there. So I'm going to go ahead and take that loose next. And then we'll be just about ready to take the head off. Okay, we got that thing loose there in the back. You see, I, I took it to loose from both sides. You need, really need to do that. So, next thing we do, I neglected to mention that this uh, timing sensor has to be removed first. It's also left-handed threads. There's just a nut that comes off and the thing comes off in your hand. You also have to remove your to adjust your timing controller. Now they make a special socket for this that goes on through the cover, but if you get your cover off, you can use a regular wrench on it. So you, the bolts are loose. You don't want to take them out, just loose. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down and remove the head bolts. Okay, and they are uh, E12 star bit. So, we got five on the top, five on the bottom. And we're going to remove those next, and then we'll see what we got. So, if you want, not going to rebuild your Vios gears, or your gear, your timing gear, you can leave this the way it is. Just leave this bolt in there, and the head will come off. And to remove this gear, of course, I've already work the chain off. Once everything's loose, you know, you just work the chain off and you work it out of the way of the head. You want to get underneath here because when you go to lift up the head, this is part of the head. But at any rate, this gear just comes off and uh, 
back like so. And then you just lift it right out of the chain and you have your uh, thing up top here that you take out. There's a spring inside here so you have to be careful not to lose any pieces of it. Or you could buy the tool and clamp it together. But anyway, when you do that, then you just unscrew your uh, gear here and the, and the timing gear will come right off. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to what's next. Okay, so then we remove the last bolt and this will just, this will slide forward and off. Now you got to work it a little bit and then in the back you also have your small chain. Um, make sure you don't drop the small chain down inside too. It would probably fit. My luck, that's the kind of things I do. Now this chain will kind of move out of the way completely. You just work on it easy like I say. If it falls down inside, you got to take the whole thing apart. Our bolts are loose we should be able to sometime you got to just uh, prize easily and break the seal on the head but that head should come loose and when it comes loose you want to lift straight up as possible also if you look at your um, timing guides there's one bolt here in the front don't forget to take that out if you notice resistance there's probably still a bolt or a nut or something like that in there. Don't go prying on things. Everything in these cars is like aluminum and plastic and it'll break and you got trouble. So anyway, don't forget to take out this bolt here. You'll be able to see. Um, the last thing we should have to do, all my bolts, are, my head bolts are loose and it should lift up out of there. Like I say, just this little screwdriver or something, break the seal should come right off so we're gonna head, go ahead and get the thing off of there next okay so with the head off get everything real nice and clean obviously the head and the engine block real nice and clean I'm gonna set my new gasket in place I just wanted to point one other thing out I've had this annoying oil leak and my return lines that go down you cannot get to the suckers with the head on and everything in place. They go down there and the mount, engine mount arm. Um, so anyway, if there's anything that's bothering you, I mean, with the thing taken apart, I can get to it no problem. So I stuck me some new O-rings on there, and I'm going to put it back on and we'll see what we got. Um, one thing you got to do is they have these... Uh, washers, the thick washers. Now, I always just buy new ones, you're not talking about big money, but they go down in the little grooves of the head and they can get lost in there, so you got to make sure you get them all out. Um, I always just count them, make sure I got 10 of them, then I know I got them all. And when you set the head back on there, you don't want to do a lot of sliding around and stuff like that. You want to actually set it on as straight as possible without fighting it too much. Now there's uh, pins here for it to sit on, so you know it'll sit right down in place. Uh, and you really need those pins to put it back on. So, like I say, after everything's all cleaned up, uh, go ahead and set the head back on there. Put your gasket on and set the head back on there. We'll see what we end up with. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and torque the head down. Now the, these do have stretch bolts. That's why the bolts have to be replaced because once you stretch them, if you try to do it again, they stand the chance of snapping off. So first thing we're going to do is what they call a joining, a jointing torque, and it comes out to about 22 foot pounds. And we start with the center, do the two center ones, and then we do diagonally and then you do diagonally the other way and so on until you get them all joint torqued at 22 pounds. Um, it's kind of important that you do it the way you're supposed to. So at any rate we're going to do that next. Uh, if you're looking for any torque specs I have on my website a lot of torque specs. I'll leave a link on the comment page but 
we have for uh, all the engine parts, uh, suspension parts, and more. So if you're looking for torque specs, take a look there. But anyway, we're going to do the joining torque. Uh, like I said, two center ones, then X back and forth until we get them all done. So, we can do that next, and then we'll move on to the stretch part. Okay, so next we got to do our stretching part. Um, but one thing I need to point out, when you put the head back on, there's writing on one part of the square part, and it says 5 through 8, and E uh, is, of course, intake. Uh, you want this writing up on both of them. Now this puts us at top dead center. Now, you also want your engine sitting at top dead center. You can see the OT here and your OT mark here. That's top dead center. Uh, you can go ahead and set this before you do anything unless you have interference. Now I had some interference so I couldn't turn the engine all the way over. And if you watch to the end of the video, I'll explain why I'm doing the head gasket. Anyway, uh, you need to make sure, like you can pull this head off without it being in top dead center. It's not going to do anything. But when you turn it at top dead center, if you're not removing both heads, if you feel resistance, you need to stop uh, and you know, set your cams so their cams are at top dead center. And that would be heat, you know, so the writing's like this. You don't want to force the engine if there's resistance. You'll push up against the valve or something like that. You could bend something. Like I say, it's best to set it at top dead center through the front crankshaft, turning the crankshaft before you start disassembling things. But I could not. So that's why I didn't do it. Uh, because I had interference in the engine so with the stretch part what we're going to do is we got them all torqued and now we got to stretch so you get yourself a, a gauge like this put it on there and we're stretching to 80 80 degrees so we do one time 80 degrees same sequence top bottom and then start xing back and forth across until we do them all so we do that once and then we go back and do it again at another 80 degrees and that will torque our head so we're going to go ahead and do that next and then we'll move on to what's next okay so i got my bolts all stretched uh just a note when you do this make sure you keep track of where you're at um, because they're not torqued, they're stretch. So you don't want to stretch one three times and one just one time. Uh, keep the same pattern, your X and your up and down in the middle. And like if you go to lunch in the middle of it, you're going to make sure you mark and remember where you're at because it's impossible to go back and figure it out. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is try to get the exhaust on. Like I said, sometimes, you know, I'm going to try to pop it back on. Sometimes you're lucky to go back on. Sometimes you got to take it loose underneath and try to work it back on. But that is the worst part to me of this whole job. So I'm going to get that out of the way. The other side isn't that bad. You can get to the exhaust, but this side's terrible. So anyway, we're going to do that next, and then we'll move on to the next thing we need to do. Okay, so I was able to get the exhaust back on. One thing I always do, I mean, especially if the head's off, I clean those threads up real good and grease them. That way you can put the nuts on by with your finger most of the way and you're not fighting like the old rust and corrosion and what have you. Um, I was able, I jacked it up and down and, uh, you know, used a little bit of a pry bar and got it back on there. Anyway, next thing we're going to do is hook up this crossover tube back here. I'll make sure you just get new o-rings and new gaskets for everything um it's not worth it's a lot of work put all back together and then realize you got a leak somewhere so we're going to go ahead and hook up the crossover tube and the hoses back there while you they're easy to get to and then we'll move on to the next thing we're going to get into the timing next so anyway we're going to go ahead and do that first 
Okay, so we got the back crossover pipe on. All our hoses are back on. Um, we're going to work on the timing some next. So what we want to do is just, just slip this gear on there and, the, and leave the chain on it. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, this center part will come out. But these timing gears are balanced. So... You may want to mark it if you think it might come apart because if you put it back different it will be out of balance. Um, we want to stick our uh, tensioner in there. Now you have to have special tools. There's no two ways about it to time this. They do make a tool that holds these together. Um, I've already put the other side back together. And just to show you the difference for the other side, your tensioner is actually pushed up from the bottom. So you have to be careful you, when you take it apart that it doesn't fall down or buy the special tool. They have a tool that goes in these two little holes here and it holds it together. Um, at any rate, you, you know, anything falls down inside there and you're tearing the rest of the engine apart. So anyway what we got to do is we set this on there we put our chain tensioner in there in the thing here and then we can stick our gear in there and then mount it in place and then we just want to start the uh, bolts in by hand they, they don't need to be tightened up yet so we're going to go ahead and do that next and then we'll move on Okay, so here you can see I have my chain half on. Now once you're sure, I lay the chain up here. And then you can take your tie wire loose from it. Uh, make sure your chain is in the track here. And it's in the track over here on this side. And you should have enough slack that you can work the chain around and get it on there. You see mine's 90% on there. I was just showing you how I start. I start from here and work around. Um, takes a little bit of patience and be kind of careful with uh, making sure your chain is in the groove here. Uh, you don't want to damage your chain bios too, so you don't want to force anything. It's uh, one of those things where it just takes some patience and some working. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get the chain on there the rest of the way. And then we'll move on and see what's next <laughs> so next thing this is what I was talking about the special tools you got it these are a must-have tool some of the other ones you noticed I didn't have the things to hold my tensioners together you could do without uh, first thing we're going to do is put this pin now, this goes in the transmission uh, you set your engine at top dead center and then this pin will slide in and I'm going to try to videotape it underneath there and see if I can show you how it goes in there. But that will set the lower end, the pistons crank and everything at top dead center. And you need that to set the timing. So we're going to go ahead and do that next. Okay, so there's a little plug, rubber plug, you'll see it. And you're actually looking at the bell housing facing the back of the car. Now there's some holes here. You see these holes? It helps if you have a flashlight that you can shine up in there and you can see where the actual hole in the flywheel is. And here's my pin. Okay, my pin is sticking in this hole right here, which is right next to your um, inspection hole. So anyway, if you look up in there, you can see where the hole is and you may have to rotate the engine you know back and forth a little bit to get the hole to line up but you see the way that pin was uh, it's smaller on the one end that goes into the flywheel itself so mine isn't quite worked in we're going to get that worked in and then we're going to move back up to the top of the engine Okay, so these are your cam locks to lock the cams in place to where they're lined. And it says right on there 5 through 8, you know, 1 through 4. So you can't get them mixed up. Passenger side, you know, 1 through 4. Driver side, 5 through 8. And what you do, 
you see they got the little Allen screw in there. And you got to move the cams back and forth until this sits down. You got to make sure this is sitting down real tight on the head. Now, these sets are everywhere all over the internet. And, you know, if you just Google, you know, BMW time and chain uh, tool sets, um, you know, everything will come up. They make all different kinds of sets. And there are sets that you know or a little more secure this is actually a cheap set now I've used it and I, I don't know how many times and you can see it's got a little bit of wear but if you don't do it every day I mean you get away with a cheap set but it's up to you you know you can buy an expensive set that you know bolts down is a little more secure people make all different kinds but the important thing is that it sits flat against your head here so Again, you just put a wrench and you can move this back and forth till it lines up and you know get it on there till it's real secure so that's the next thing we're going to do we're going to do both sides that way and then we'll move on okay here you can see it's on there all the way and you can see how there's no gap in there at all there's no gap in the middle and there's no gap on the bottom now I've you know tapped on them a little bit but this is very important this is something you you know you don't want to go back and do again because it's a lot of work to get back to it so you know take your time make sure you got everything on there right make sure they fit back here back here real tight and everything is the way it should be you know real nice and tight uh, so it can't move so anyway you know you you slide this one on and then like I say you use a bolt you get it back up lined up you put your um, bolt back in there tighten it down and you know everything's in place so you do that to both sides and we can move on you know to what's next okay so also I neglected to mention to rebuild the timing gear um, there's a kit and that's a whole thing in itself so I'm actually making a separate video on how to rebuild that so go ahead and subscribe and you'll find that video um, you know how to rebuild your gears uh, when they go bad they usually you have symptoms you'll hear a knocking noise up front and uh, sometimes they'll run a little bit rough on uh, idle but at any rate we're moving on to the timing so first thing you got to do you see I have a socket jammed in here they make a actual chain tensioner you need to put tension on this chain this chain needs to be real tight okay and you need to make sure it's tight on both sides everywhere uh, I found a socket jammed under your where your, your chain tensioner goes works uh, but it's up to you you know you buy the proper tool and you use that but the chain has to be very tight next thing you do is you rotate these things and again they make a tool that slides on the front and you rotate them counterclockwise and if you did not remove these saying um, you know you don't want to rebuild them or whatever they're full of oil so you need to move them back and forth with a with a tool to get the oil out so once you're sure of that what you do is these little pins have to have uh, continuity and you hear it beeping so you see I'm just continuity to the block so when they're in the uh, correct position counterclockwise the pins will you know read continuity and then we tighten them up uh, so the first thing we do is we want to snug these and snug the bottom one and you don't tighten the bottom one and you do the top one first so we're going to do that on both sides and then we'll go back and see what's next okay so I just snug everything up with a ratchet once you do that you want to go back and double check um, these make sure now this one sometimes you get them where the 
pins, you know, you got to wiggle it around a little bit. Just put some pressure on the pin and wiggle it. Um, and other times you just touch it and, and it's right away. So I've seen, I've heard people complain, well, I'm not getting any continuity, but, you know, most of the time it, that it's just wear, I don't know. But if you, you know, put some pressure, just make sure you have continuity. As long as you have continuity, it'll be okay. So next thing we do is we torque everything down. Now, the timing gear is torqued at 92 foot-pounds and the exhaust gear at uh, 81 foot-pounds. And again, I got all these torque specs on the website. Um, if you need to know anything, take a look at it. So we're going to go ahead and torque that next, and we'll move on from there. Okay, next thing we got to do is we got to set our sensors. Um, so you just start them on there. And then they make this special tool, and again, you got to have it. You can't guess at it. And you just use two of the uh, timing cover bolts, and you bolt them on there like this. Uh, there's a hole in it, and the pin goes through that hole right there. So, as you can see, the pin there. And you, you bolt that up tight, and then you just torque this down to where it goes. Um, anyway that is the last step to our timing so we're going to go ahead and do that on both sides and move on to the next thing okay so with those torqued down 30 foot pounds um our engine is timed i um, just want to caution it doesn't hurt to double and triple check check four times five times um, make sure everything is exactly how it's supposed to be. Like I say, when you turn that key, you'll know right away that it's not right. Uh, and it's a lot of work. I've had to do it before, go back and retime it again, and it really pisses you off after you get everything back together. You say, oh my God. Uh, anyway, so we remove our, all our time and stuff, our blocks, our, um, pin in the transmission get all that out of the way and then we're going to put our covers back on now when you take this out or your tool off you know that's going to drop down um you know don't worry about it too much and you just push that back up nothing else should move when you slide your timing cover on uh you know it should be pretty well set but we're going to go ahead and slide the timing cover on both sides. And uh, if you haven't done so, go ahead and um, put your motor mount bolts back in. Don't forget those. Don't forget your uh, the timing bolt that you took out of here out of your head. Put that back. Um, and anyway, so that's what we're going to work on next. we got to clean this up a little bit better. Uh, and put our front covers on so we're going to go ahead and do that and then we'll move on and see what's next okay so i got all my covers back on my gaskets on here um i'm gonna go ahead and stick the chain tensioner in up in here next and then i'm gonna change the valley pan cover that's pretty straightforward um i ordered this got supposedly a reinforced gasket or something instead of a plain old bmw gasket uh, so anyway, you got to take the knock sensors, or you don't have to, but it's a whole lot easier to take the knock, knock sensors off of one side, uh, give you more room in there, and, you know, just take it out, put it back in. Now, I warn people, I use impacts. Um, I love impacts. I could never go back to not using them. And you take stuff apart, I take stuff apart, I use the impact. Put it back together. These things are all aluminum, and it doesn't take much to strip the bolts out. You get a couple strip bolts and something like that, and you got a nightmare. So I don't use the impact to put things back together. Um, you know, sometimes if it's a long bolt, I'll run it close with the impact and then, you know, torque it down. And again, all these torque specs are on my website. But at any rate, that's what we're going to do next. We're going to do the, the chain tensioner and the valley pan. So I got the valley pan off. 
and I just wanted to point something out. Um, see how there's no antifreeze in there. Last thing you want to do is take any aluminum block and start it up with no protection like that. And by the time you dump the water in the over in the uh, reservoir and let it flow through, a lot of this is left dry up here when you first start it up. Now, if you don't remove the head, there's some in there. But what I'm going to point out, and if you keep watching, I'll show you how I make sure this is actually full of antifreeze. If you look down here in the water pump, this is a hole straight through to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to assure that it is actually full of antifreeze or, you know, some type of protection water so you don't overheat it. Uh, because you start it and run it, by the time antifreeze gets in here, the cylinder walls already overheat. So, anyway, it's kind of an important thing. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on and we'll move on to see what's next. So the valley pan cover is on. Now, um, I don't know why they, they got these little plugs in the holes. They don't give you new plugs. <laughs> um, I would suggest just buying a new cover because they're plastic and they've been heated under there for who knows how many years, how many years has. When you try to, try to take them off, they just break up. Another thing to begin with, um, whenever you do anything automotive like this, always try to tighten the bolts down in a sequential order like across one and then you know back and forth across each way as X patterns. Uh, and always start from the middle. Um, that's just the proper way to do it. You lay the metal out flat instead of trying to bunch it up, especially when you start talking about aluminum and things like that. Uh, but anyway, you know, after you get all those bolts tight, go back and recheck them because there's a lot of them. And once you tighten them all down, then you go back and it makes the other ones loose again. So what we're going to do next is we're going to stick the water pump on. Um, and put our belt tensioner back on and it's much easier to put that belt on right here where you got all this kind of room so that's the next things we're going to do is we're going to got to stick the two uh, pipes in there of course now I put new o-rings in and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to slide on there and um, I'll put just a dab of grease and on my finger and rub it around the rubber now, everybody will tell you that grease deteriorates the rubber, but at any rate, in my opinion, that little bit of grease one time is not going to completely deteriorate the rubber. But just, it's up to you, you know, the correct way you're not supposed to. You know, you can use uh, non petroleum Vaseline or different things like that also. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stick those tubes in. I'm going to put the water pump on. And I'm going to put the belt back on. And we're getting somewhere. And then we'll move on and see what's next. Okay, so we got the water pump, belt on, tensioner, all that bit. Um, I promised the story of why I was changing the head gasket. If you notice, the water pump looks brand new. So I had a really bad day. And thank you for not commenting because I know it's happened to other people but anyway if you notice I got tape on the intake manifold here I thought the water pump was leaking I just opened the hood I was losing fluid and I saw antifreeze dripping off the water pump I said oh the bearings bad on the water pump god oh, damn it so I ordered a new water pump when I started taking it apart I realized it was the valley pan cover and the antifreeze was running out the front so I have fixed these valley pan covers using a form of gasket put a real nice bead on there stick it back on and it, it's fine but anyway what I did was I did all that and I said you know I'm just gonna stick the new water pump on there which I did put it all back together started it up and hear this big loud knocking noise so what happened was is a washer fell down in the intake hole and went down in the cylinder now 
<laughs> Luckily enough, it didn't damage anything, but of course, I had to pull the head off to get it off. So, what started out as a $45 valley pan, a couple hours of work, ended up water pump, head gasket, <laughs> valley pan, close to $700, and two days work. So talk about bad days. I'm going to write that one off for never again. That's why there's tape on the intake holes now. So anyway, we're going to move on to the next step, which is the intake manifold. Now, just make sure all your plugs that go there, like your knock sensors, are, are there. And nothing is in the way. Now I can take my tape off and I can lay my intake manifold back on. And when you do it, you remember how you took it apart, how it had the, the spring-loaded thing that went in here. So when you do it, you just set the valve, the intake manifold on here, and you have to kind of work that in there for your pollution as part of your pollution control or whatever like that. Anyway, um, so we're going to stick the intake manifold on there next, and we only have a couple more things, and I'll show you how to add the antifreeze in there to make sure you have a good flow, and we'll see what we got. Okay, so I stuck my oilers on there both sides. They're pretty much only go on one way. Next, I'm going to stick the valve cover on. Now, the only thing you have to take note in the back there's these half moon cutouts. You're supposed to put a little bit of uh, form a gasket on the on the uh, rubber of the half moons, and you put a little dab here and here to help with the sealing of the uh, valve cover gasket. So I'm gonna put both valve cover gaskets on. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick the fuel rail back in and stick my coil packs in. And then I'll show you what we got to do next. We almost got it. So, I think it's all back together. Just a couple of things. The one thing what I told you about filling it, I leave this radiator hose open. Now, if you dump antifreeze down in the hose until it fills up, it goes down in here to, to the, uh, the crossover tube in the back and it supplies antifreeze all inside the block um, you know everything's pretty much plug and play you just got to find the right plug for it you know double check yourself one more time and when you first start it up you're it's normal for it to miss a little bit don't give it gas just let it you know sit there and miss and work its way out and it'll it'll come back anyway you have a nice day, and be sure to subscribe. i got a lot of other videos for BMW stuff. Thank you very much.